impressive young man, isn't he? We're watching him on. He's, he's after doing about half a dozen interviews there in the snow. In different in Munich, languages. In different I languages. don't like those matches in the snow, Tom. You're better <laughs> off watching. Porto. Ah, far, far better. I mean, Connor and Niall were re rubbing it in in commentary that, that we had to watch Porto and Chelsea, and, and that was on. Listen. That was tremendous fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it looked, looked roaring there. I, I must admit, me and Brian were half watching out the corner of our eye, really. Um, there was not much happening in our game, but fabulous game, great result um, for Pochettino, yeah. um, you know, to come into to Paris halfway through and to really turn their fortunes around. I know they're embroiled in a, in a battle for their league title with, uh, with Lille, so, you know, difficult for him on a domestic level, but, you know, if he can get through in this round, it'll be a fantastic uh, achievement for him. It's a good advertisement for a European Super League, Brian, is it? You could watch that every week, couldn't you? Uh, yeah, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be those quality of teams every week, Tommy. You still have to have a full league of a load of teams. I mean, we knew before the competition started that these are two of the teams yeah. who are really in contention. I mean, they were the two finalists last year and both of them play with, you know, a, a style that we love watching. There is no real defensive intent about how they go about it. Mm. And they try to beat the opposition by scoring more goals than them. And it was very much the case of that. I suggested before the game that Bayern Munich are vulnerable defensively and that uh, PSG might expose them better than they did yeah. in the final, and that's what came about. Well, let's let's do the the analytical job on it, and and maybe aside from being so impressed with with the excitement of it, defensively Bayern Munich, uh, and, and certainly the goalkeeper Brian, is, is that is that what we're talking about yeah, here? Yeah, but look, what was Boateng doing out in the left back position, out on the touchline, and leaving Alaba or leaving Sule so exposed in the middle of the field, he, or middle of the centre back position, he, he never looks comfortable to me, Sule, when he has to run back towards his own goal. Decent enough finish, but poor by Newer. We said it before the match; he often has to rescue them. That time he didn't. He didn't rescue them. He lets a. a, a, a a poor goal in, and this is awful defending again. The line is all over the place on the way out. But good finish by Marquinhos. Niall was very critical on, of Sula in commentary there, Damien. Yeah, it was almost robotic that when they cleared the ball, he's supposed to squeeze, and, and he did, but he didn't pay any attention to what was around him. Now, I know, I think it was Mbappe was in an offside position, and I think that's what Sula was thinking, if I can squeeze out. Also, give credit to Neymar, because from where he was on the pitch to, to reverse that ball inside, I think a lot of people were expecting that, you know, perhaps expecting a square ball or to, to go wide for another cross, but he reverses one brilliantly, and obviously they think that it's Mbappe inside, it's all. Uh, offside, but uh, Marquinhos just creeps around the back and kept himself onside. Yeah, Neymar is a, a man under under pressure in some way. Sent off uh, at the weekend after coming back after six weeks, so these are big nights um, for him. And, and from Bayern' point of view, look, another hero for for PSG was was the goalkeeper. He made ten saves tonight, equaling Manuel Neuer's record in a Champions League knockout um, tie. Now, Bayern did get on the score sheet, but it was an absolute onslaught, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean they they created lots of very very. I mean it was slim pickings in our game with with, with Porto. To, to get chances, but these were really, really good opportunities for Bayern. Um, and Keylor Navas, who is a much maligned goalkeeper, even when he's at Real Madrid, uh, a lot of people were saying that he, you know, he should be replaced. And Thibaut Courtois came in. I always liked him. He always made really, really big saves at big moments for Real Madrid. Perhaps he's not fashionable. He doesn't look like mm. a, a stereotypical goalkeeper. But I tell you what, he makes some really, really good saves. Little, I don't think he's any chance here with this glancing header from uh, Chupo Moting. But um, I do like him as a goalkeeper, and uh, he had a great night tonight. Um, let's have a look at the, the goal from, from Muller then. Um, and look, a, a lot of twists and turns in this tie yet to come, but you can see the quality that, that Bayern have. Yeah, Kim, Kim is just ball in, beautiful ball, and, and Thomas Muller. And, uh, if ever there was a glancing header, I mean, Chapa Mo thing was, was more of a, a real header, got a good touch. And look, just a glance off the top of his hair nearly, but guides her into the corner than a beautiful finish. And the 27 attempts at goal tonight, I mean, you know, I had, the, the, obviously... The, the it was 30, 31 goals. by 31, the end. 31, was it? Sorry, <laughs> it was 27 last yeah. night. It was five minutes to go, of course, mm. and they continued to batter him. But, you know, the defensive side of it has let, let Bayern down tonight. And, and we always kind of thought that might be the case, didn't we? As brilliant as they are going forward. Yeah, because they leave space yeah. at the back. They leave the two centre backs isolated at times. Both full backs push up, uh, and and they ne they don't look very mobile. They start without ball yeah. tank tonight. He ends up coming on early, and then you've got Sule, and neither of them look particularly. 
you know, able to get around when there's fast players playing against them who might exploit this. Well, but the generally Neuer does the job to save them, but tonight he didn't. They, they certainly didn't look comfortable when they had Mbappe running at them for, for the third goal. What a brilliant moment. Oh, yeah, fantastic stuff. I mean, you're running out of words to describe this guy. You really are. But, I mean, if you give him this type of space... And again, one Bayern Munich player deeper than everyone else. But look at the way he feints and just sits back uh, Boateng. Boateng thinks he's in a good position, shapes to shoot. Um, Boateng drops off, uh, almost falls over really, but he just drags it into this near post through his legs. And Neuer has absolutely no chance. But uh, this guy has really come to the fore in the Champions League this year. And, and dare I say, just kept Neymar in his shadow. You know, Neymar left Barcelona to get out of Messi's shadow. Mm. Looks like he stepped into an even bigger one. Um, second leg is so intriguing of this game, um, isn't it? I mean, look, you, you look at that and you look at the amount of chances that Bayern, Bayern created and I know it's two, it's three away goals, I should say, from, from PSG, putting them in a really good position, but... It's hard to see the second game be much different. Yeah. It's hard to see PSG having the ability to sit on the lead and sit in. I mean, tonight, you know, they, they had to make a change. Marquinhos, having scored a goal, had to go off. They end up with Danilo playing centre-half. Mm. Not, not, they, they hadn't got the most solid look about them. They got away with it in the end because of their quality in attack. But you, you can see Bayern Munich being capable of getting two or three goals in, in Paris. They want to get 79 goals in the league already this season. They're averaging a lot. No of, Lewandowski, though. No, no Lewandowski, but tonight maybe they miss them a little bit, but they're still capable mm. of making so many chances with the quality they have.